हेलो फ्रेंड्स हाउ आर यू कैन यू हेयर माई वॉइस कैन यू हेयर माई वॉइस गाइस If you can hear my voice, can you just type uh, okay in the chat window? Hello, Dipshika. Fine. So you guys can hear my hear my voice. That's good. so today what we are going to do is basically uh, i see a lot of uh, a lot of you are basically worried about the costing component and the commerce and accountancy component the companies act so don't worry about that today basically we are going to do some costing mcqs right we are going to do some costing mcqs and costing is not something which is very difficult it's like simple uh, plus and minus so provided you try to understand the concept right so we shall do some costing uh, mcqs and we shall try to understand through mcqs the idea should not be that we should try to know the answer we should try to understand the concept behind that so before i start i just want to tell you that in case uh, you want you want uh, to enroll into some of our courses there is 30% discount on all courses for sebi individual or combo courses with rbi you can use the coupon code sebi30 to enroll into our courses that the details of all these courses uh, are given in the description link i mean there there are links for the details of those courses in the description of this video so you can click on these links and you can read about the details of those courses in case you are planning to enroll into any of our courses so let's come to the first question the first question is which of the following would be least preferable to come under the scope of cost accounting that which of these basically would not be coming under the scope of accounting or would be least preferable to be counted under the concept of scope uh, cost accounting finding cost of objects being produced so finding cost of objects being produced cost control cost reports maximization of profit which which one you think shall be the answer so as i told you the idea is not to uh, idea is not to go to the answers i shall explain you the concept of scope of cost cost accounting and then shall i come i shall come back to the answer of this question so basically what is the uh, scope of cost accounting cost accounting basically uh, is basically to do costing when you are producing certain things uh, you will be doing costing of those things then cost bookkeeping cost book bookkeeping is like you want to record that costing into your uh, books of account that is called cost book bookkeeping then there shall be cost analysis cost analysis is basically cost recorded in the books right when you uh, record your cost in the books basically you try to do analysis that what kind of cost are uh, what kind of cost are fixed cost what kind of cost are variable cost what kind of cost are uncontrollable cost what kind of cost are controllable cost so that all you try to understand when you do cost analysis so cost analysis comes under the scope of cost accounting because only by doing cost analysis you can do cost control right only by understanding cost analysis you can do cost control then cost reports cost reports are basically prepared for the leverage of the higher management so they can understand that what is going on in the costing and they can better analyze using those reports and then there is cost audit which is basically then that all the all the cost accounting that is being done is being done as per the accounting standards or not right so these kind of things comes under the scope of cost accounting right basically costing of the things cost bookkeeping maintaining accounts of your uh, things with respect to their cost cost analysis identifying the cost various types of cost where is the leakage cost control controlling that leakage cost reports for the higher management and cost audit to find out whether all the cost accounting is being done as per the prescribed guidelines by the uh, regulatory regulatory bodies 
so if if we come back to this question which of the following would be least preferable to come under the scope of cost accounting finding cost of objects which are being produced cost control cost reports or maximization of profit so who will tell me the answer of this i'll explain to you the concept of cost accounting as per that explanation what should be the answer of this which of the following would be least preferable to come under the scope of cost accounting finding cost of objects being produced cost control cost reports or maximization of profit sunny singh is saying four i want everybody among you to answer guys please participate if you get to understand these kind of concepts i can assure you that you will be able to solve at least 20 to 25% of your questions in the exam by only watching these sessions fine so a lot of people are saying 1 3 1 finding cost of the objects see finding cost of the objects is part of cost accounting i explained you i explained you costing here right costing is finding the cost of the object so costing is under the scope of cost accounting so the question is which of the following would be least preferable to come under the scope of cost accounting the answer is maximization of profit right the answer is guys maximization of profit let's come to second question of the day so here the answer is answer number 4 now this is a very interesting question i hope you are able to read this the question is that basically two figures are given figure a and figure b you have to see these figures and try to understand that which type of accounting is being done under them there are basically various types of accounting financial accounting cost accounting management accounting but here this question is with respect to financial accounting and cost accounting that what's the kind of difference between them you need to understand that and then only you can answer this question this is figure a try to see what is being depicted in figure a and this is figure b try to see what is being depicted in figure b and once you understand this then try to answer the question i'll explain you i'll explain you then only i'll tell you the answer because my emphasis in today's session is on explanation and not on the answers So a lot of people are answering A financial accounting, B cost accounting. Well, let me explain. See, financial accounting is basically accounting at an overall basis at the company level. So financial accounting might tell you financial accounting might tell you that basically materials used are th this much seventy five thousand or materials are being used in in. all across the company the wages were 20000 other expenses were 25000 profit 30000 because sales was 150000 so it basically tells you the overall profit of the company now as a senior manager in a company if you want to know that what is the profit for different products suppose you are in hul and you want to know that what is the profit with respect to shampoo what is the profit with respect to soaps what is the profit with respect to maggi this all you want to know now this financial accounting right this profit and loss account under financial accounting will not tell you that will it tell you that it will not tell you that so how can you do that you can do that with the help of cost accounting this is a kind of accounting which comes under cost accounting here what we have done is here basically we have produced the same thing but we have done it product wise right so we have product x product y product z so we have done it product wise for each product we have how much materials were used how much how much wages were used what were other expenses and what is the profit so here a manager can easily deduce that for product x the profit was 26000 for product y the profit was 8000 for product z the loss was minus 4000 overall 26000 plus 8000 that is 34000 minus 4000 that is 30000 which is in line with here right so this is just giving a further breakup of costs for various products so this is called cost accounting right when you want to find cost at different levels many maybe different products maybe different departments that is called cost accounting right so if you try to find the answer here what shall be the answer guys A is financial accounting 
एंड बी इज कॉस्ट अकाउंटिंग राइट ए इज फाइनेंशियल अकाउंटिंग बी इज कॉस्ट अकाउंटिंग राइट सो द आंसर हेयर इज ऑप्शन नंबर वन Let's come to the next question, guys. Which of the following is true? Now here, basically, this question is testing you upon the concept of cost and expense, right? Here, basically, you are being taught about the uh, you are being tested upon the concept of cost and expense. The question is, which of the following is true? Cost and expense means the same. Cost can be expired or unexpired, whereas expense is expired cost. Ex expense can be expired or unexpired, whereas cost is expired so expense. Cost is expired expense and expense is expired cost. So a lot of confusion. I can understand, but once I explain you about uh, the concept of cost and expense, you will be able to answer answer this very easily. Advait Agarwal is asking, is this sample class? No, Advait, this is not the sample class. We are just doing some practice MCQs, right? Uh, the sample classes as in are not available or uh, we can make it available if you want. You can write us an email at hello at the rate So this is, this is not something which we are giving in the course. This is just a practice MCQs. Right? So a lot of people are giving answers. That's good. Maybe you are doing self-study or maybe already you would have read it in our course. I know many of you have enrolled into our courses. So you would have already read into our course the difference between cost and expense. So let me tell you the difference between cost and expense. So basically what is meaning of cost? See cost can be expired cost or an unexpired cost. Now let me try to explain this with an example. Suppose you buy a car uh, for rupees 1 lakh. I am just taking a hypothetical scenario. Suppose you buy a car for rupees 1 lakh, right? And uh, after one year, uh, the value of car reduces to say 80,000. After one year, the value of car say reduces to 80,000. Now you bought a car for 1 lakh. After one year, the value reduces to 80,000, right? Now your expired cost is 20,000 because original values was original value was one lakh. Now the value is 80,000. So now the expired cost is 20,000 here. Expired cost is 20,000 that has expired that has lost its value. And the unexpired cost is 80,000. Right now expired cost can be an expense or it can be a loss when it will be an expense when you have taken benefit from that expired cost. Suppose the value was 1 lakh initially then it became 80,000 and in that one year you have driven your car you have used your car it means you have taken usage from that expired cost then it is called expense then it is called expense. And if you have not taken usage of that expired cost, the value reduced, but you were not taken, you were not able to take advantage of that expired cost, then it, then it would be called loss. For example, you bought raw materials for rupees 100 and their value reduced to 80, right? And their value reduced to 80 because raw materials worth rupees 20 were stolen. They were stolen. So in this case, the expired cost is 20, but you were not able to take benefit of that because those raw materials worth rupees 20 were stolen. Then it's a loss. Right? So I hope you can understand the difference between cost, expense, loss, expired cost and unexpired cost. Is it, is it right? Are you able to understand? SKS is saying uploads are awesome. Very well explained. Thank you SKS for enrolling into our course, trusting us and then giving us compliment. It means a lot for us and I can assure you that we will work only more harder from here. I hope you are able to understand guys. Now let's back. Let's go back to the question and try to solve this. 
Which of the following is true? Now who will tell me the answer? I have just explained to you. Who will tell me the answer now? Cost and expense means the same. This is wrong. Cost can be expired or unexpired whereas expense is a expired cost. Is this right? It seems right to me. Expense can be expired or unexpired. No expense is always an expired cost. Cost is expired expense. No, this is wrong. So the answer here would be option number two, right? Answer here is option number two. Let's come to the next question. Finding cost for each department separately is a com concept related to. So I told you in cost accounting, basically we try to find cost at different levels, maybe at product level, maybe at department level. Now, when we try to find such cost at various levels, maybe a department or something, then what is it called? Is it called a cost center? Is it called a cost object? Is it called a cost unit or is it called cost camping? Tell me guys, tell me guys, when we try to find cost for each department separately, then that concept is related to cost center, cost object, cost unit and cost camping, what it is called. Let me first explain you. So basically first let me explain you the cost center because here the answer is cost center and then I'll explain you about other options. Cost center, when you try to find the cost for a small part of a company, for a small section of the company, that is called cost center. That is called cost center. Now, a cost center can be anything. It can be a department. If you try to find out uh, the cost for a particular department, the sales department, the manufacturing department or any department, then it would be department would be a cost center. Mm -hmm. If you try to find the cost for a particular set of people, say salesperson, you want to find that now, I want to, uh, I want to find the cost of all these salesperson individually, then the cost center would be salesperson or a worker. If you find the cost for run, running dif different machines separately, then your machine would become a cost center. If you try to find the cost for different products, say shampoo, uh, shoes, uh, Maggie, then your product would be your cost center. So it's very simple. Cost center is basically something for which you try to find out the cost for that particular thing. So here, obviously the answer would be cost center. The answer would be option number one. What are other options? What is cost object? Can anybody tell me what is cost object? Naini is saying, sir, really scared if we, if I can't clear paper to no, no Nayan money. Sorry, Nayan. Don't worry about that. We are with you, right? So just stick to the schedule and you shall be able to do that. Jai Shri Lanke Sara free mein padha diya ga. Phir Jai Shri free mein kaha padha diya hai? Course mein kam se kam 300-400 ghande ke videos hai. Aadhe ghande ke session se kya free mein ho jayega? Nahi honne wala beta. Hai na? Free mein nahi milta hai kuch. Though we will try to teach you maximum, but Again, there is always a limit to which you can teach free. Right. Finding cost for each department. So I told you cost center is answer. What is cost object? Cost object is basically something for which you want to find the cost. Say you want to find a cost for a product. You, you want to find a cost for a service like service for going from Delhi to Mumbai. So that, that, that might become your cost object, right? Cost unit. Cost unit is the unit in which cost is measured. If you are producing steel, the cost might be measured in terms of metric ton of steel produced. If you are producing shirts, then cost might be measured in number of shirts. Uh, cost might be uh, done uh, like this much of cost per shirt. Right, so cost unit is basically the unit in which the costing is to be done. Right, if you are selling water, then the costing can be done per liter of water right and cost camping is nothing it's just a confusing term uh, that's given here uh, to just confuse you so cost camping is nothing here the answer is cost center 
So let's go to the next question, guys. The work related to building bridges and dams would come come under which type of costing? Job costing, batch costing, contract costing, process costing, or service costing? Tell me what shall be the answer when you are giving a work or doing a work related to building bridges and dams then it would come under which type of costing jayshree is saying i value your efforts and so took the paid course thank you jayshree sunny is saying please explain the cost object again i'll come to that sunny let me finish this question the work related to building bridges and dams would come under which type of costing job costing batch costing contract costing process costing or service costing very 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 important question with respect to your exam you must understand the meaning of all these type of costing though they need to be studied in depth but still at a superficial level even if you understand the meaning maybe you can solve one question in the exam so most of the people are saying contract costing let let me see let me first explain you so basically there are various methods of costing and what is job costing job costing is something when you do some work as per the needs of specific needs of the customer suppose you are doing interior decoration in a house so that is as per the interior uh, that that is as per the specific needs of that customer suppose you are doing painting in a house painting the walls in the house so that is as per the specific needs of the customer job costing happens when there is no mass production or mass manufacturing or mass servicing of things it is customized to the needs of the customer that is called job costing in which job costing is used whenever we want to find the cost of work which is specific to the needs of the customer right and then contract costing is very closely related to job costing and batch costing also is very closely related to job costing what is contract costing the only difference between contract costing and job costing is that that contract costing is basically used to find the cost of work which are bigger contract costing is also used where you perform work which is specific to the needs of the customer but when the work is lot bigger it is it is for longer duration than we use contract costing to find the cost of such type of works the example would be building of dam or bridges now you build when you build a dam or a bridges you are doing that for a specific need of that thing you cannot build a bridge and then mass produce that this can be used all over the uh, countries or all over the world no depending upon the need of that place you will build a bridge or a dam so that that becomes a job costing but why it is under contract costing because building a dam or a bridge is a project which is bigger which is of longer duration and what is batch costing again since batch costing is related to job costing obviously batch costing also means that their costing will be done for the works which are specific to the needs of the customer right batch costing means that obviously since it is related to job costing that it would be used to find the cost of work which is related to meet the specific needs of the customers but then what is the difference between batch costing and job costing the difference is that in batch costing you you do you do things for the specific needs of the customers you produce them in batches so there is some kind of mass production but then it is it is it is somewhat related to the needs of the customer suppose a company is manufacturing shoes different styles different sizes though it is producing in large quantities but still it is producing as per the specific needs of the customers in batches a particular shoe style a particular number will be kind of produced in a batch maybe 1000 10000 in quantity right then a other shoe style with a particular size would be produced in large quantity but the different kinds of shoes with different sizes would be produced in batches so here 
batch costing is used that is an example of a batch costing like shoes or manufacturing tires you can produce tires for different cars of different companies you might produce one set of tires for maruti swift then one set of tires for maruti baleno right so here mass production takes place but in batches right right guys so if i come back to this question the work related to building bridges and dams would come under which type of costing the answer is contract costing right the answer is option number 3 Let's come to the question number six. Which of the following statement is true? Now this this is easy, guys. I expect all of you to answer this. This is very easy. Which of the following statement is true? Even if you have read finance or even you have some common sense, basic sense, then you will be able to do it. Jai Shri, can we call batch equal to job plus process? Mm, I I don't think so. Why do make our own definitions, Jai Shri? Right. Which of the following is true? I think you should be able to answer this, guys. Very easy. Please read out the options and try to solve this. so many people are saying 3 some somebody is saying 1 well let me explain let me first explain the funda of fixed cost and variable cost and then i'll tell you the answer study and teach is saying option number 5 let's see let's see who is correct Now, what is a fixed cost? See, you have set up, you you have set up a shop, and you are giving a rent for that shop. That is a fixed cost, irrespective of how much volume you sell. Suppose you are selling shoes, you have taken a shop on rent. Rent is one lakh. That becomes your fixed cost. Whether you sell one pair of shoe, whether you sell ten pair of shoe, doesn't matter. So, fixed cost will always remain the same. right in terms of factory you have taken you are running a factory and you have taken a building on rent so whether you produce zero quantity or you produce 100 quantities rent would remain the same right so fixed cost remains the same with respect to volume of production but another point that you must understand is fixed cost per unit overall fixed cost will remain the same my rent for building the total fixed cost will remain the same whether i produce one quantity whether i produce 10 quantity right now the point is but fixed cost per unit decreases if i produce 10 units then my fixed cost per unit would be rent divided by that 10 so fixed cost per unit decreases as my volume increases fixed cost per unit decreases as my volume increases i hope you are able to understand this If I am giving rupees hundred as rent, my overall fixed cost will remain hundred. But if I produce two things, two pair of shoes, my fixed cost per unit would be hundred divided by two, fifty. But if I produce ten pair of shoes, my fixed cost per unit would be hundred divided by ten. That is rupees ten. So my fixed cost per unit decreases as my volume of production increases. Now I come to variable cost. What is variable cost? variable cost is basically something which is variable suppose you are producing shirts for producing those shirts you require some cloth for each for each shirt you want to produce you would require some cloth so here cloth is your variable cost that is as and when you produce more you will require more cloth so your variable cost with respect to cloth would keep on increasing so variable cost will keep on increasing as the volume of production increases if i produces more shirt my total variable cost will keep on increasing 
so the graph would be like this on the other end variable cost per unit that is what is the variable cost per unit will remain the same because one shirt will require same amount of cloth which is available at the same price so as my volume of production increases on x axis there is my volume of production on y axis is the cost so as my volume of production increases my variable cost per unit will remain the same right so i hope you are able to understand fixed cost overall fixed cost remains the same when volume increases but fixed cost per unit decreases when the volume increases overall variable cost increases when the volume increases but the variable cost per unit remains the same when volume increases right now let's go back to the question tell me so what shall be the answer for this which of the following statement is true total fixed cost decreases with increase in volume of production no fixed cost remains the same total variable cost increases with decrease in volume of production no total variable cost increases with increase in volume of production if volume of production is decreasing then the total variable cost shall also decrease so this is also wrong fixed cost per unit increases with increase in volume of production no fixed cost per unit decreases with increase in volume of production so this is also wrong variable cost per unit increases with decrease in value volume of production no variable cost per unit remains the same whether the volume increases or decreases so this is also wrong so the right answer is option number 5 right so let's go to question number 6 7 committed and discretionary cost come under which type of costs Tell me, guys. Committed and discretionary cost come under which type of cost? Fixed cost, variable cost, fixed period cost, product cost, or none of the above? Nilambar Roy is saying, "Well explained." Thank you, Nilambar. Sunny Singh is saying, "Sir, your well, your videos are very informative and valuable. Can you please let us know from where we can practice more such MCQs?" So we shall add such MCQs in the course also. Don't worry about that. This is this is just for practice on YouTube. We shall add twenty, thirty MCQs per chapter. Don't worry about that. Committed and discretionary cost are which type of cost? So let me explain that that first, and then we shall come back to the answer. so you all know what is fixed cost now you all know what is fixed cost now right fixed cost is which is fixed i mean which is not variable now fixed cost can further be divided into committed cost or discretionary cost committed cost or discretionary cost what is committed cost committed cost is basically something which cannot be reduced although we we have studied that fixed cost cannot be changed but still suppose i am giving a salary to my uh, employee that is my fixed cost but still next month i can fire him so i can reduce my fixed cost in the longer term so fixed cost are of two types committed cost and discretionary cost committed cost are which cannot be reduced suppose i have done a rent agreement for 7 years right then that is my committed cost i cannot come out of that rent agreement i cannot change that fixed cost so that is my committed cost discretionary cost is which can be reduced suppose you have a company and you have some employees in that company and those are not performing well you are not earning profits then obviously you can reduce your fixed cost by firing such employees so those will be discretionary cost right so th these are discretionary cost which can be reduced so basically committed cost and discretionary cost are examples of fixed cost so shavan pant is saying course videos are different from these video obviously shavan this is what i am taking is like 10 mcqs this is just a sample in course what we have done is this 
I mean, the first chapter itself contains of two videos in which we have explained everything in detail. Here you might think that fixed cost, variable cost, these are the only costs. No, there are around 30 types of costs. There are around 30 types of costs that you need to understand in the costing at the very basic level. I'm just talking about the first chapter. Controllable cost, uncontrollable cost, fixed cost, variable cost, direct cost, indirect cost, relevant cost, sunk cost, imputed cost. I mean, n, n, n number of cost. Anyways, so if, if we if we go back to our question, committed and discretionary cost are what type of cost? The answer should be fixed cost. The answer shall be option number one, right guys? The answer shall be option number one here. The salaries are variable cost, right? No, the salaries are fixed cost. The rental value of a self-occupied building for business in a, is an example of the rental value of a self-occupied building is an example of incremental cost, replacement cost, marginal cost or imputed cost. Now who will tell me? Come on guys, I, I can see a lot of people are answering this. Whether it is incremental cost, whether it is replacement cost, marginal cost or imputed cost. Oh my God, a lot of people have answered it as imputed cost. Study and teach, have you joined our course? Fine, fine, okay. So that's why you are able to answer this. Sandeep. Kushal is also able to answer this. He has joined our course. Implicit cost fee. Jashiri. So you have read the first chapter. That's good, Jashiri. Replacement cost. Sharat Kumari is saying replacement cost. That's not the answer, Sharat. So let me explain you different type of cost. So basically, some more type of cost. As, as I told you, there are around 30 to 40 types of cost. So among them, there is these three also what is differential or incremental cost differential or incremental cost is the increase or decrease in total cost when you change from one alternative to another suppose you live in delhi you want to go to mumbai earlier you decide that i go by train it will cost you 100 rupees then you decide that no i'll not go by train i'll go by aeroplane so it will cost you 500 so now the difference between these two cost because you you went for another alternative is called differential or incremental cost that is 500 minus 100 that is 400 right yes nilambar it see when you talk about confidence i feel that people who will study in the right direction and with confidence and with hard work they shall be able to clear the exam because a lot of people have already given up so just remember these three things Study in right direction with right resources. Right resources are very important. Otherwise, you can keep on reading 100 resources and you will not get what is being asked in the exam. Right resources, right confidence, right, right resources, right confidence, and right type, right, right kind of hard work. So I'll come, come back to marginal cost. Marginal cost is nothing, guys. Marginal cost is your variable cost itself. Marginal, mar, marginal cost is your variable cost. That is cost which is incurred to produce one additional unit if you want to produce one more shirt you will require more piece of clothes so that would be your marginal cost now the important ones is imputed cost here the third one is imputed cost third one is imputed cost what is imputed cost imputed cost is something uh, which are not directly visible which are not incurred directly suppose you have uh, you are running your own company in a building which is owned by you now since that building is owned by you you don't have to give rent for that building right so you might not include that cost as one of the factor you might not see that as a cost because you think that this building is owned by me so i don't have to give rent 
but ultimately you are missing on the rental value if you are not running that business you will you can have that building on rent and keep that rent as your income so such kind of cost are imputed costs which are not directly visible you are not taking them into account but still they are cost right so imputed cost is an invisible cost that is not incurred directly so rental value of a building is one example right interest on interest on capital is imputed cost if you if you have invested your capital and there is interest coming on that right then you will because it's your own capital so you are not giving interest on the loan so you will not take the interest on that capital as your expense but ultimately it's an expense sunny hame course lene ka kya karna sunny this is a simple lecture yaar abhi aapke course mein 400 ghante ka video aayega wo youtube pe 400 ghante nahi padhane wale hum try to understand don't be demotivated that way theek hai i hope you understand sunny <laughs> matlab youtube pe yaar agar 10 परसेंट भी पढ़ा दिए ना बहुत बड़ी बात होती है राइट सो सो एनीवेज लेट्स मूव डोंट वरी गाइस दोज हैव कोर्स प्लीज रीड फ्रॉम कोर्स इन चीजों पे मत ध्यान दो मैं बार बार कह रहा हूं पढ़ाई पे फोकस करो निकलना है अपॉर्चुनिटी कॉस्ट क्या है वहां आपकी 15 लाख की जॉब है उस जॉब के बारे में सोचो ना कि ये क्या चल रहा है वहां क्या है वो रिसोर्स क्या है तो फ्री पढ़ा दिया हम भी यार हमें भी पता है यार क्या फ्री पढ़ाना है क्या कोर्स में डोंट टेक टेंशन कंसंट्रेट माइंड कंसंट्रेट कीप योर सेल्फ मोटिवेटेड इन राइट डायरेक्शन आई एम सेइंग यू अगेन अगेन सो द आंसर हियर वुड बी फॉर इंप्यूटेड कॉस्ट राइट नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन गाइस विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इज ट्रू फॉर प्राइम कॉस्ट ये कौन बताएगा Which of the following is a prime cost? Prime cost is direct material, direct labor, direct expenses. Prime cost is direct material plus direct labor. Prime cost is cost of production. Prime cost is direct expenses. Who will tell me? in videos will teach in english only no hindi in uh, in the course videos guys so lot of people are answering prime cost is a direct material plus direct labor plus direct expenses let's see what's the answer so basically what are the elements of cost what are the elements of cost total cost is a sum of direct cost and indirect cost what is direct cost what is direct cost guys direct cost is something which is direct cost is something which is directly which can be directly related to your unit of product suppose you are manufacturing a product you are manufacturing a shirt then you know that this much of cloth is required to produce this shirt then the the price of that shirt obviously can be directly related to the cost of producing one shirt so that is called direct cost what is called indirect cost what is called indirect cost indirect cost is something which cannot be directly indirect cost is something which cannot be directly related to cost of one unit of product suppose you are producing various products using machines and those machines are using lubricating oils or you are changing the uh, spare parts of those machines but those machines 
are producing various kinds of products so you cannot attribute that cost of greasing those machines to one unit of product so that is called indirect cost right or for example i'll give you one more example suppose you have a worker in a company who is producing 10 shirts in a day then obviously if his wage is 100 rupees you can see that for you can say that for one shirt he is taking rupees 10 because 10 shirts in 100 rupees on the other hand there is a supervisor in a company who is supervising various workers in various departments who are manufacturing different products then you cannot attribute the cost of the salary of that supervisor per unit of product that that will become indirect cost that will become indirect cost so direct cost is which can be easily identified or related to per unit of product whereas indirect cost is which cannot be easily identified or related with one unit of product right and direct cost can be your material cost material means like for example a shirt used in a piece of cloth used in manufacturing a shirt labor means the people the salaries the remunerations the wages of the people involved in that process and direct expenses expenses other than material and labor would be called direct expenses if they are direct they can be indirect also like the, what what can be the direct expense suppose uh, it takes 100 rupees to transport uh, 100 shirts from one place to another so you can you can say that there is a direct expense of rupee 1 per shirt because you can why it is direct expense because you can relate relate it with one unit of product and why it is a expense and not direct labor cost because it is not a labor or a material cost it's a transportation cost so any cost other than material or labor would be an expense and it is direct because you can relate it with one unit of product right similarly any material labor or expense cost which cannot be related to one unit of product would come under indirect cost now the sum of all these will be direct cost also known as prime cost also known as prime cost and some of these which is called indirect cost also known as overhead right so prime cost your direct material plus direct labor plus direct expense overhead is your indirect material plus indirect labor plus indirect expense right so what shall be the answer here guys which of the following is true for prime cost tell me i have just explained you Tell me guys, very easy guys, I've just told you prime cost is your direct material plus direct labor plus direct expense. So the answer here shall be option number one, right? Answer here shall be option number one. Lightning is an indirect cost. If you are manufacturing a lot of things in a company, how would you say that, no, my this cost uh, of lightning is attributed to one unit of product. You cannot calculate that. It's 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 really impossible and if you can do that by some mechanism if you are able to do that then it will become a direct cost it's not like something is something will definitely be direct or something will definitely be indirect depends upon whether you are able to identify that overall cost with per unit of product then it will be direct cost right So the answer here shall be option number one. Guys, I had to do 10 questions, but I will be able to do only nine questions due to shortage of time, right? So please excuse me for that. I'll just uh, leave the last question. So I'll just say thank you uh, for joining this session because uh, I think costing is a very important component. I just want to tell you that costing is something which is not difficult. Though yes, it will be something new for you. You will need to study, uh, or you will need to study it. You will need to spend some time, right? But uh, in the end, I think if you spend 30 to 40 hours on reading costing, I think you will be able to do it comprehensively, which shall be uh, 
which will be enough for your exam costing uh, vijay bargav is saying costing standards should be covered yes vijay costing standards should be covered i think there are 14 costing standards if i am not wrong cas 1 cas 2 to cas 14 you should do them according to jain and narang book option second is true i don't know but this is definitely correct about prime cost एफएम जयश्री सिंह एफएम के लिए बताओ जयश्री एफएम ऑलमोस्ट सेम है लेकिन कुछ चैप्टर्स आरबीआई में ज्यादा है बजाय के सेबी के सिलेबस में तो उसका हम वीडियो डाल के कल या परसों आपके एफएम में डाल देंगे कि ये चैप्टर पढ़ो ये मत मत पढ़ो राइट स्टडी एंड टीच विच एमसीक्यू सेशन फॉर टुमारो लेट मी सी स्टडी एंड टीच योर नेम so i cannot assure you i'll be taking session daily because we have our commitments with respect to completing our courses and it's already uh, very much you can say that no already very less time and lot to cover and for people also a lot to read very tight schedule but uh, since we will be true to our commitment so that would be our first priority and if given time we shall take some free lectures also so thank you guys uh, i think that's it we shall close this session and uh, meet you some another day thank you bye